Greetings. Welcome to the Native American Fish and Wildlife Society's webinar series. My name is Corey Standing Lucero. I'm a fish and wildlife biologist, one of two. I'm a member of the Second Fox Nation of Oklahoma, a graduate of Oklahoma State University Stillwater Campus. My career began with the U.S. Forest Service on the Coconino National Forest in Arizona. I then worked for a BIA Southern Pueblos Agency as a journal biologist in Albuquerque. I began my work with the society as their Southwest Chronic Wasting Disease biologist right after <clears throat> working for BIA SPA. I then worked as a field biologist with SWCA and Environmental Compliance from ICF International, and I am currently one of two fish and wildlife biologists. This is Sean Cross. He was born and raised on the Flathead Reservation. He attended the University of Montana after leaving the Army. He worked for the U.S. Forest Service, Powell Ranger District, Wildlife Fisheries and Hydrology Department. He's worked also for the Nez Perce Fisheries Program. He then worked for the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribe Fisheries Program. And then he finished up some work as the refuge manager for the Medicine Lake Refuge in Montana. Today we're going to talk about rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus. Some topics for discussion. I'll give a brief overview of RHDV2. I will then show you a current map. I will then talk about the outbreak in the southwest region. Then I'll show you a map of the Southwest outbreak. Then we'll talk about how RHDV2 spreads. Some biosecurity measures that you can do. We'll talk about precautions. And then we'll speak about wildlife activities. <clears throat> rabbit hemorrhagic disease, or RHD, is a fatal disease in rabbits and is considered an FAD or a foreign animal disease in the United States. This disease is caused by several virus strains. Animal health officials detected one of these strains, the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus serotype 2, or RHDV2, in North America within the past few years. RHDV2 is highly contagious and, unlike other rabbit hemorrhagic disease viruses, it affects both domestic and wild rabbits. This includes hares, jackrabbits, and cottontails. And many times the only signs of the disease are sudden death frequently and bloodstained noses caused by internal bleeding. Infected rabbits may also develop a fever, be hesitant to eat or drink, or show respiratory or nervous signs. RHDV2 at this point does not impact human health. The first detection of RHDV2 in North America was on Delta and Vancouver Island in Canada. Feral rabbits, and it showed up in feral rabbits in February of 2018. The disease was later confirmed in a pet rabbit in Ohio in September of 2018 also. More recently, RHDV2 was detected in a pet rabbit and feral rabbits on Orcas Island in San Juan County, Washington State. The Canadian detections are within 20 miles of Orcas Island. Washington. This is a map <clears throat> that will show the disease as it progresses in the United States. You can see up there towards Vancouver. The time lapse will then show Ohio, again in New York. And if you watch towards the southwest region, you will then start to see the cases that the current outbreak in the southwest. As of March 24th, an index positive detection came from domestic rabbits from Cibola County, New Mexico. 
black-tailed jackrabbit in Eddy County, New Mexico, and desert cottontail rabbits from Diana County, <clears throat> New Mexico. The first detection of RHDB2 in wild rabbits and hares in the U.S. Mortality was reported in Mexico. It initiated situation reporting and weekly OEI follow-up reports. Then additional U.S. detections followed quickly. This is a map of the southwest region where, as you can see, we started to get positives here. It showed up along the border and it has since spread up through Colorado into Utah, southern Nevada, southern California, Texas. The RHDB2 virus is very resistant to extreme temperatures. It can be spread through direct contact or exposure to an infected rabbit's excretions or blood. The virus can also survive and spread from carcasses, food, water, and any contaminated materials. People can spread the virus indirectly by carrying it on their <clears throat> clothing and shoes. Protect your rabbits with biosecurity. A vaccine for RHDB2 is not currently available in the U.S. Instead, it will be up to you as the owner to protect your rabbits by practicing good biosecurity. Biosecurity simply means to take steps every day to keep germs and viruses away from your animals. These actions will significantly reduce the chance of RHDB2 or other contagious diseases that will affect your rabbit. This is a picture of a gloved hands to stop to prevent diseases spread, the goal is to prevent the disease from impacting domestic and wild rabbit populations. To minimize the risk, some following actions can help keep your animals safe. If you live near or visit an area where this disease was confirmed, do not touch any dead wild rabbits you may see. You may contact your local veterinarian, state, and or federal animal health officials to learn if RHDB2 has been detected in your area. If you see multiple dead rabbits, report it to any state wildlife officials. If you own domestic rabbits, do not release them into the wild. If your rabbits appear ill or die suddenly, contact your veterinarian. Some wildlife activities. RHDB2 and wildlife detections, they, it's been known to affect the black-tailed jackrabbit or Lepus californicus. Desert Cottontail, Silvalegus audubonii, Antelope Jackrabbit, or Lepus alinii, and the Silvalegus nutellii, or the Mountain Cottontail. Here's the outreach and resources. When you go to the USDA APHIS website, you can simply type in rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus. Everything that I have shown you within this presentation will pop up here if you would like to do more in-depth research. If you have any questions, you can contact me, Corey Lucero. My phone number is 505-435-1655. My email is clucero at nafws.org. Thank you.